All right, so everybody, welcome to the first edition of the .NET Foundation's Project Spotlight. We're very happy to have Gary Ewan Park from Cake come here. So Gary, you want to give yourself a little intro? Yeah, yeah, I'm Gary Park. Uh, I'm from Scotland. Uh, and yeah, I'm one of the uh, main contributors to the Cake project, which is a .NET Foundation project. Excellent. Yeah, so you want to talk a little bit about what Cake, I, I know probably a lot of people are familiar with the Cake name in the .NET ecosystem. Do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, what what Cake is and what its goal is? So Cake is, uh, first and foremost, Cake is a, it's a build orchestration tool. It is a tool that allows you to take the different parts of what your build is. So when, when folks, folks talk, talk about a build, there's some some ambiguity about what they're referring to there. So is it the compile step or is it more than that? So when I refer to a build, what I'm talking about is the compilation step, the uh, unit testing step, the packaging step, the publishing step, um, the notification steps. All of those things combined to me make up a build. So Cake, uh, as an orchestration tool, allows you to easily stitch all of those things together. So rather than using something maybe like PowerShell or uh, some other build automation tools, you can do that with Cake, uh, which is, uh, at, its, at its heart, is a C-sharp uh, application. So you write a script in C-sharp that allows you to orchestrate all those different parts of your build together to then ultimately uh, perform your build. So if I'm a, a .NET developer, right, and uh, I'm building a, a fairly complex solution, maybe I have a bunch of projects and maybe I have a bunch of external dependencies. So what mm -hmm. can Cake do to make my life easier? Because I imagine my life would be very difficult. So without something like Cake, without some sort of build orchestration tool, that process for you at the minute would be either in Visual Studio or in VS Code or whatever IDE you're using, you would use uh, Control-Shift-B. Uh, or in the command line, you would run, uh, you might be using the .NET CLI, so you might do uh, .NET build, .NET publish, and then you might run uh, some sort of um, uh, static analysis tools on, on, on top of the code base to, uh, to see if things are working the way you want them to. So rather than doing all of those processes manually, uh, Cake comes into the equation that says, uh, let's define what that build process is. You write it as a Cake script. So that's just a, uh, essentially it's a C-sharp file in your uh, repository. Uh, and then that gets checked in with your source control. So as the build process changes or as you make tweaks to it, you have the full benefit of um, source control management that goes with that. So like I say, you organize the, the Cake script into a set of discrete tasks. You have a, uh, a build step, a build task. You have a, um, a publish task. You have a analyze task you have a whatever task it is your build process and then you build up what's known as a, a DAG uh, a directed acyclical graph of the dependencies so it then controls the order of the execution of those tasks but one of the main benefits of something like cake is that you, the build process that you define within that cake script you can run that locally so then uh, when you start to uh, introduce things like uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment, you might use something like Azure DevOps pipelines, you might use uh, AppVair, you might use something else. But that cake build process becomes a single step in something like Azure DevOps or yeah. uh, uh, AppVair. So rather than having to redefine or re-engineer that build process in a YAML file or something else, it's the exact same process that you build locally on your developer machine as you're then building up in the cloud somewhere. So there's a, a direct synergy between the two. So it sounds like Cake does a lot of stuff, right? So I'd imagine that the the custom ability of it is really, really high, but how, how hard is it to just get started? Uh, so, the, so Cake as a project has been around uh, since 2014. Um, uh, uh, my virtual colleague, uh, Patrick Svensson, started the project back in 2014, and it's kind of evolved as a product uh, or a project since then. So the original version of Cake used uh, both the Roslyn scripting and the mono compilation engines in order to perform, do the work it does. It then evolved into a single project that has uh, just the Roslyn scripting engine. We then went through a process of having a .NET framework version of it and now to a .NET global tool version of that. So the reason I tell you all of that is because of that history, depending on what parts of the docs you're looking at or what ex existing projects you're looking at, um, you may go down one path. But the, the, the kind of the, the, mess, the recommended way of doing it as of now is you uh, create a 
uh, a dotnet tool manifest in your project so let's say you're walking up to a new project it's a dotnet core application it's got a solution file some projects you walk up to it you create a dotnet uh, tool manifest file and into that you install uh, the cake uh, global tool and then from there you just need to create a build.cake file and so that build.cake file um is a single it, it, well, it can start to start off as a single file but it can be multiple files that kind of uh, include other files into it and into there you just start defining that dag um so you would you create a task that is uh, build. So in there, you would use uh, some of what we refer to as the cake aliases to run the .NET Core build step. So okay. you would pass in your standard sort of uh, what configuration are you building? Is it a debug build? Is it a release build? Uh, you would pass in um, potential parameter, additional parameters you need to pass in to that build process. So it's it doesn't it doesn't do anything magic. It's literally a uh, orchestration and de definition of what you're doing anyway so what you're what or, or or more specifically maybe what visual studio or what dot uh, visual studio code is doing for you you then own that so you, you're taking that uh, process that's happening for you in the background you're defining exactly what that is into your cake script and then like i say that becomes part of your source control uh, and then it, it flows on from there it's funny that you say that it's not magic but the way you're describing it, it definitely seems like magic even though you're building it all yourself like I can imagine a, a situation where in order to just do a build and maybe I have to run a PowerShell script or a bash script if I'm in Linux or, and then I need yeah. to configure some things and then I got to hit F5 and VS and then I got to do a bunch of other things like having all that stuff, like in a workflow based thing, like that's extremely valuable. Right. Um, so I, I definitely, you know, I think you're not giving yourself enough credit. I think cake is, has a little bit of magic in it. Um, yeah, right. It, 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 it can it certainly appear that way, um, yeah. but like I say, it's at the end of the day, it's it's an orchestration tool that you're is orchestrating the tools that you're already using. So you might do it in individual steps, you might um, or you put it onto someone else's machine to run another part of it, etc. So it's really just taking all of that knowledge and putting it into one place. Yeah. So Cake is not Cake is not um, unique in this sense. Sure. Uh, there's lots of tools out there that do it. There's there's Rake, there's Fake, there's Make, and that's kind of where the Cake name yeah. kind of came from. You know, this eight kind of um, uh, tools that have evolved over the years for different languages. And like I say, Cake is uh, it was Patrick's envisioning of. Uh, what he was trying to get out of the build tools that he was using at the time um so yeah that's where they can, the name cake came from awesome yeah so what's next for cake so it seems to me like you have a very very rich feature set already so like what are the things that are on the roadmap to kind of extend upon that rich feature set so, so we're, we're literally, literally at the point that we're, we're trying, trying to get to uh, a one point low release of cake so there's been something like a hundred or so different releases of Cake, but all of them have been a kind of a pre-semantic uh, version 1.0 release. Um, but in that kind of process, we're up to something like 7 million downloads of the Cake.exe uh, NuGet package. Um, so it's, it is a, it's a, it's a, mature, a mature project, uh, but we're trying to kind of draw the line in the sand and say that this is uh, the 1.0 release. Okay. Uh, and once we get to that point, there are some plans about uh, uh, refactoring some of the internals of Cake and how they work. Uh, but and there's also some optimizations to be made in terms of the the, the compilation step. So at the minute, uh, in order for Cake to function, it takes that uh, build script that you create, uh, essentially compiles it, and then it runs it. So there's some uh, optimizations there in terms of uh, the compilation stage. Um, so that's kind of the, the main focus. But Cake as a project has got kind of lots of different arms. I mean, uh, we brought Enrico recently onto the team, so he created the uh, the GitHub action for Cake. So it, there's 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 work to be done there. Um, there's other things in terms of um, IntelliSense support. Uh, so one of the things that uh, Martin on the team is kind of focusing on is we do have IntelliSense support uh, for Cake within VS Code, but there's some optimizations there to be made again to improve how those things work. So it's, it's a living, breathing project. Um, obviously, there are bugs that crop up every so often. Um, we are in the process of changing our documentation. So um, like I say, because we've moved from a uh, project that was focused on .NET framework and, and moving into the more uh, .NET uh, global tool version of it. There's changes to the documentation that's happening. Um, so we work with um, Dave Glick on the team, um, who is the creator of uh, 
the YAM project, which has now been renamed to the Static uh, project. Um, there's work to be done in terms of creating or uh, updating the website to uh, new to move to that new tooling as well. So yeah, we've got lots of stuff on on the on the cards at the minute, um, but it keeps us busy, keeps us out of trouble. Yeah, I, I find it very. It, it just it goes to it's, versioning is hard, right? You have you know m millions of downloads and thousands of people that leverage it, but you're not even at 1.0 yet, so. Um, it's it's, a, I, I mean, it, it, it's a, we've been hesitant to get to that 1.0 sure. release because um, once you get there, there is that, like, you kind of want to make sure that the public facing API is kind of spot on and you yeah. know you're not going to break anyone. Um, so we're getting very close. We're like I say, we're at 0.38.4 at the minute um, of a cake. And like I say, the next release is going to be a 1.0 release. Once what we can get to the final. To, what you could do is just troll your users is get to like version 0.99 and then just have like a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of minor revs. Like that would probably make people super excited. Um, awesome. So I, I want to kind of put on my developer hat again, right? So say for instance, I use Cake. I use it all the time. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that maybe I see that I could, you know, that I could add that could add value to Cake. So what are some of the, the best ways that you see as the maintainer that uh, a, a contributor, a community member can contribute? Mm -hmm. So I mean, so we 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 have got a. This goes back to when I kind of first started on the project. We, I like kind of things pieces to be in in in, in line uh, for certain things. So one of the things we did add around that time was a, a, a contribution model. So we have kind of a fairly well defined uh, process that we ask maintain uh, future contributors to go through. Uh, the first one is to uh, essentially reach out to us. So whether that's through we have a, a, an active Gitter channel where we do a lot of communication. And we've recently just switched on uh, discussions in the, our GitHub repository. So if you want to ask questions there, you definitely can. Um, the reason for that is we've had some uh, incidents in the past where uh, folks have gone off and done a bunch of work, put a lot of effort into it, and we essentially couldn't merge the PR that was yeah. created because that communication line, lines hadn't been open. So the work that they were wanting to add in we weren't prepared to bring it into the project. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I would ask anyone interested in create, uh, looking at the project to reach out to us, get in touch with us, whether it's, uh, like I say, a GitHub discussion, whether it's in Gitter, and essentially get sign off on the, the thing that you want to add in. Yeah. And then the kind of the process from that point is to uh, create an issue on our GitHub repository. And in there, we kind of uh, we can go backwards and forwards. We can discuss uh, implementation details, like the specifics of the, uh, uh, the whatever's coming in. And then from there, it would be a pull request. Uh, and we go backwards and forwards on that in terms of uh, changes suggestions that sort of thing and ultimately that gets pulled in so i mean we're really lucky as a project we've had quite a lot of contributors to the project we're, we're up at like a, over 180 different uh, con oh, wow. uh, contributors to the project um and like i say um there have been some incidents in the past where we've had to say look no um we're not going to accept that right. but like i say if we do that upfront work and we get sign off from the team then i'm happy to say like if you go back through our release notes and our blog posts a big number of the contributions that goes into the project are all community driven. Um, so it's it's a great project to work on from that perspective uh, to get uh, people uh, buying into the project. That's awesome. I think one thing as well to call out is that I imagine as a developer, documentation is probably way down your list of things that you'd like to do, right? So I I'd yeah. also probably, you know, one thing that if you don't, if you don't feel like you feel comfortable or maybe you're a bit concerned about contributing to the actual code or core of Cake, like, I imagine that you welcome anybody to update your documentation, right? Absolutely. I mean, like I said, that, that's a, it's kind of, it's, it's where I started with the project. I mean, I, I used to be a maintainer of um, the Saki project, which is a PowerShell build automation tool. And then I was watching Cake as it was evolving. I was like, I kind of liked what they're doing over there. So I started looking at the docs, making some suggestions. So yeah, it's absolutely a great way to get started in a project. So um, even just today, um, was it today or was it yesterday? Uh, someone on Gitter mentioned that there's a, a 404 link off of our documentation it goes to a broken link so that's awesome. kind of an easy uh entry point just find out where that link is in the uh, documentation fix that to where it's meant to be and, and that gets you involved in the process seeing how we do things uh and then uh, going from there no absolutely docs are a great way to get started on, on any project yeah i think just in general like i started getting i started out my open source career looking in like i rang docs for net and things like that and uh, yeah. i think Docs is a very like a low hanging way to start, you know, contributing to some of the things that you've been using and you're very familiar with. You know, some some yep. of us aren't brilliant enough to write 
uh, you know, a great orchestration tool for build for building .NET applications, but we all can write docs, right? So yeah. definitely want to And the other side of that as well is as the creators of the tool, we don't always imagine how the tool can be used. Sure. So we've seen some great ideas about how it can be used, what it can be done. So we've we've had examples where we've brought some of those back in as um, kind of guest blog posts into the website. So if you've got anything like that where you've used Cake and you, you've, you've done something special with it, uh, we would definitely welcome that as a contribution either directly into the docs or like I say, as a guest blog post so that we can yeah. let folks know about it. So that's another way of doing it, yeah. That's awesome. Well, Gary, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with us and being you know, our guinea pig for Project Spotlight. And I hope that people take full advantage of learning more about Cake and eventually contributing. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we sign off? Uh, no, I think it's I think it's about it. So yeah, if if, if like, just a general call out, I mean, uh, .NET open source is a great thing to be involved in. I've done it for a good few years now. Uh, I'm happy to say that's kind of my full time job now. I get to do this for fun as well as uh, uh, paying the mortgage. So uh, it's definitely a good place to get started, and uh, and I'd encourage anyone to do it. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Uh, there on this project spotlight like page, there's going to be a ton of links to. Just everything you need to know about Cake, as well as links to some ways that you can contribute. So, Gary, thanks again. No problem.